looks like a press event rather at any moment. She's walking out at this time. She represents the state of Georgia, or rather a portion of Georgia. She is going to speak live now. Uh, we'll see what she has to say here. Let's go ahead and try to listen live. Again, this is uh, Marjorie Taylor Green, Congresswoman from Georgia. Again, breaking news here. She will address reporters. Uh, let's listen live. For letting me know. Well, first off, thank you all for uh, thank you for coming out here today and being willing to hear what I have to say. Um, I just want you to know that for the press, I, I truly support freedom of press. I think it's one of the things that makes our country so great. And um, I really hope that you'll be able to tell my story a little bit better instead of just reporting and repeating uh, maybe some things that you don't like about me or things that were on social media in 2018. You see, the reason why I ran for Congress is because I really don't respect what our government has become. As just an ordinary American, someone who's had to work hard all my life, someone who's been married for almost 25 years and raised three kids, and I gotta tell you, my three kids are the greatest part of my life. That's the best thing I've ever done is to be a mom. I really love our country, I love our freedoms, and I sincerely want all of your children, my children, and all of us to continue to have the opportunity to have the American dream. But our government is failing us. You see, we're approaching nearly $30 trillion in debt. As a successful business owner for over 20 years, if I ran my company the way this government runs and spends and wastes and puts us in debt with our own hard-earned tax dollars, I'd be out of business a long time ago and we'd be homeless on the streets. But it's much worse than that. For decades now, this government has sold out our American worker, sent our jobs overseas to foreign countries. We've opened our borders wide open to be flooded with illegals coming into our country. Think about Kate Steinle, who was murdered on a pier in California. She died in her father's arms. Krisha Odette, her father served our country four tours, four tours in the Middle East, protecting our freedoms. When he came back home, his daughter was killed by an illegal alien in Texas. These are the things that shouldn't happen, but these are the policies that are allowed and continued. Our country has made it legal and funded with our tax dollars over 62 million abortions, murdering God's creation in the womb. That is a sin, a disgusting evil that is unfathomable. I can't even believe that it continues. But here's the thing, all of these women that have gone through that, it leaves a hole in their soul that never heals. And those women have been taught that this is the way that they should achieve. This is the way they can build a career. This is a way that they can solve the problem that they didn't want in the first place. That's a horrible lie. It's a terrible lie. As a mother and a woman who's had a successful career, I can tell you being a mom is the greatest gift of my life. I really hope that America can end the evil of abortion. I also want you to know that free speech matters. Free speech really matters. And yesterday, when the Democrats and 11 of my Republican colleagues decided to strip me of my committee assignments, education and labor and the budget committee. You know what they did? They actually stripped my district of their voice. They stripped my voters of having representation to work for them for the budget. A successful business owner that knows how to make a profit, not a loss. That's what my district voted for me for. I'm a mom with three kids who has taken my children to gun-free school zones their entire time they went to school. And when I was in 11th grade at 16 years old, when Joe Biden created gun-free school zones, one of my schoolmates brought three guns to school on a school bus and a duffel bag, brought them into the school in the first period class because he was very upset at two of his classmates. He pulled out his weapon, went to take control. The coach in the classroom knocked him to the floor, but he was able to reach in and get another one of his guns, fired his weapon, took control of our school, and we were held hostage in our classrooms for five hours. 
I want you to know I know that fear that David Hogg felt. It's terrifying. It's terrifying when the only person in the building with a gun is very upset and is there to do evil. And there's no good guy with any guns to protect us. That's why when I was in Washington, I could go from Senate office to Senate office, just like David Hogg, and say, vote no to gun control, because we need our Second Amendment rights. We need to be able to protect our children with good guys with guns, just like the people up here protected themselves with 30,000 National Guard troops. Imagine that. They want to leave our children defenseless, but they will surround this place with a big, beautiful border wall and a whole bunch of good guys with guns. See, these are the policies that disgust me. These are the policies that disgust the American people. And these are the policies of hypocrites. You see, when the people in charge want to just spend your money and spend your money and you have no choice but to give it to them, and believe me, I've been a good taxpayer for years now, and I always will be. And then they want to send our hard-earned dollars over to foreign nations and so-called foreign aid to fund things like border walls and bridges and schools and roads and abortion. That's wrong. Our tax dollars should stay here in America. Our tax dollars should fund our border wall, our bridges, our schools, our roads. They should help our homeless. They should help our people, our forgotten, our orphans, our foster care children. That's what our hard-earned tax dollars should be doing. Not what these people here have been doing for decades. The, those that are in charge have been here for decades. Decades. Do you know the average age of retirement? It's around 64, 65 years old in the private sector, but not here in Congress. They cling to power as long as they can because apparently it's addictive and they can't give it up. This is something that I just can't tolerate. I can't take it and the American people are so sick of it. You see, a record number of Americans voted for President Trump record number of Republicans voted for President Trump. Do you want to know why? It's because they loved his policies. They loved his fight. They loved the fact that for once we had a president that stood up for America, stood up for American businesses, and remembered the forgotten man. He was a president that didn't care about your skin color because God created us all equal and thank God our Constitution affirms that. He was a president that wanted every single person to achieve. And that's why we supported him. That's why I've always supported him. And I want to tell you, Republican voters support him still. The party is his. It doesn't belong to anybody else. This impeachment trial that's going to happen next week is a circus. It's a circus that allows media companies to get lots of clicks, lots of views, and sell ad dollars. And you know what? That's pretty disgusting, too. Everyone here knows that he did not cause this attack on the Capitol, nor did I, nor did any Republican, but the responsibility falls squarely on those that invaded the Capitol, the ones that planned it ahead of time. Those are the people that should be held accountable. I was in the chamber, unlike AOC, Representative Ocasio-Cortez, that faked her outrage with another hoax just another hoax that gets shared everywhere. You see, those kind of fake lies, like AOC, Representative Cori Bush telling people that I attacked her when in fact it was on video that she attacked me. This is the kind of fake outrage that is dividing our Congress along with the fake outrage on the news every single day that's dividing our people. You know what the media does, and you guys are great at it, and I'm telling you this because I want to like you. But you're doing a really good job at addicting our nation to hate. Teaching people to hate people like me, President Trump. And then on the right, it's the same way. Teaching people to hate AOC, Ilhan Omar, Nancy Pelosi. See, it goes both ways, doesn't it? But teaching people to hate and addicting them to it is killing our country. It's causing people to no longer be friends, families to no longer talk to each other, even husband and wives getting divorced, parents not talking to their children and the other way around. I think that's 
terrible and it's shameful. When you have such a platform as you have, what do you want your legacy to be? Do you want your legacy to be the platform that destroyed our nation and caused our people to hate one another? Or would you rather be a platform that told the truth because you're given the great gift, the freedom of press, so that you can tell the truth? I would love for you to be that platform, and I would be so proud of you. I wouldn't be mad at any of you. I had the greatest opportunity yesterday, and I'm so grateful for it. I got to say what I had done wrong. And do you know how freeing that is? I, I'm not kidding. It, I, I seriously feel blessed by God because I got to do it on a world stage. I got to say, I said things wrong. I believe things that were wrong. And you know what? You know, I'm, I'm so happy I got to do that. My district is thrilled with me. People are all over the country are thankful and supporting me. And for that, I'm grateful to them. None of us are perfect. And when we, when we go about our life thinking that we are, we're such hypocrites. Truthfully, we really are. If we think we're perfect and can judge one another, that's such a mistake. So going forward, I've been freed. I do, I feel freed because you know what's happening on these committees? You see, we have a basically a tyrannically controlled government right now. The Democrats. We've got Joe Biden writing executive order after executive order, sign him, sign him, sign him, doing whatever he wants up there in the White House. We have Nancy Pelosi leading the Democrats in Congress to do whatever they want. They don't care what Republicans have to say. They don't care about what our districts and our voters have to say. They only care about pushing their socialist agenda through. They only care about taking away our freedoms. That's not right. So if I was on a committee, I'd be wasting my time because my conservative values wouldn't be heard and neither would my districts. Right now, my Republican colleagues are being told that their white skin makes them inherently racist or that their service in, the, in our nation's military to our country defending our freedoms makes them bad and a domestic terrorist. How are we at this place? How have we come here? The few bad actions of some do not define the many. And that's the truth. They kicked me off of my committees after spending a year promoting, supporting, funding on Act Blue, BLM, defending, lying, and calling these peaceful protests when there's buildings burning in the background, and sharing bail bond links to get the criminals out of jail. But they want to kick me off committees for social media posts that were conspiracy theories. That's pretty hypocritical. You see, the American people won't forget because they're still reeling from the devastation of this past year. Where cities were burned, people were attacked, police officers still dealing with it, attacked night after night. They take that home with them and it hurts their families. Occupying federal buildings, taking over police precincts, so much damage, tearing down statues and monuments, erasing our history. This is what has happened. I do not condone what happened on January 6th. It was one of the scariest days of my life next to being held hostage in a gun-free school zone when one of, my one of my fellow students took it over with a gun and no one protected us. No one could. It was terrible. So I'm going to ask all of you, think about what you report. When you're on the news calling riots, peaceful protest, the American people are disgusted with you because you're lying. When you're promoting people that protect these things and want to continue it, people are sick of it. They're fed up because they lost their businesses and they may have gotten hurt and they're tired of being attacked because they want to wear a red hat that says, make America great again or they voted for Trump and we're proud of it. Things have got to change. And I tell you again, I'm fine with being kicked off of my committees because it'd be a waste of my time. You know who I am, I'm a very hard worker and I'm proud of it. So now I have a lot of free time on my hands, which means I can talk to a whole lot more people all over this country and I can talk to more people and make connections and build a huge amount of support 
that I've already got started with people that want to put America first and don't care about the party lines and don't care about any of the political identities involved. And that's something that I am very excited about. So I look forward to going home and seeing people in my district. I'm thankful and overwhelmed by their support. I'm grateful that I had the opportunity to say the things that I don't believe and I shouldn't have said in the first place. And, I, and I'm really grateful to my God because he forgives me. And that's what being a Christian is all about. I have a message to other Christians in this country. Don't be lukewarm. That's not what your faith is for. Our Savior died on a cross so your sins can be forgiven and he doesn't want you to be quiet about it. He wants you to share the gospel and share it with everyone. That being said, I'm going to let you guys go about your day. I know you got many things. Yeah, I'll take some questions. Yeah. I just wanted to ask you specifically. I know you talked yesterday. I listened to your speech. But you said on a video in January of 2019, I'm just going to read it to you verbatim. You said it's been taken out of Who are you with? What's your name? I'm Jessica Dean. With CNN. By our law, representatives and senators can be kicked out and no longer serve in our government. And it's a crime punishable by death is what treason is. This is what you said. Did you see my did you see my speech yesterday? I how many how many stories did you report on Russian collusion conspiracy lies? No, I want to know have you apologized for Russian collusion conspiracy lies? Have you I, I don't have to. I stand by the fact that you said Nancy Pelosi is guilty of treason and that's I think you heard my speech yesterday. You owe the people an apology. You lied about President Trump. You owe the people an apology. I've done mine yesterday. Okay, next next question. Did any of you hear my speech you yesterday? You regret saying that she is guilty of treason and deserving of death. Congressman, Congressman what, do you th what do you see as your role here going forward? My role is the job I got elected to do. Uh, I'm going to vote very conservative, pro-life, pro-Second Amendment, pro-border, pro-America, pro-American businesses, pro-economy, pro-jobs. We need to reopen this country. We need to put kids back in schools. Keeping them at home is, is killing our children. Depression is high, suicide's high. We canceled prom, canceled graduation, canceled their lives. I'm going to be working hard on those policies, and I'm going to be holding the Republican Party accountable and pushing them to the right. Can you say, can I follow up on that? What do you say to those 11 Republicans? Thank you. Jen Pellegrino with OAN. You mentioned AOC, and I wanted to ask you about that. You know, your supporters commonly know you as MTG. Um, there's a lot of comparisons that could be made as a freshman in Congress making waves, um, receiving positive and negative attention on both sides of the aisle. Would you say that perhaps uh, you've maybe scared Democrats uh, in the media as well in the same way that AOC, when she stepped on the scene, uh, kind of made waves among Republicans? I'd say there's a comparison between us and, and the fact that we really don't care what other people think about us, because I can say that for myself. I've never met her, but I assume she probably feels that way. Um, but there's a major difference in us. AOC embraces policies of socialism to what you could call communism. She wants to have she wants to have all the power, and then the people that she claims she wants to help, her policies would reduce them to poverty, and they wouldn't have many freedoms left. So there's a big difference than, I, than us. Um, I support our Constitution and all of our freedoms, and I'll work very hard against her policies. And one more question, if I may. Jen? Yes, one more question. No, so that's Representative not Adam Kinzinger this morning on Twitter, he said, he said there's no remote remorse you here for your past comments, questions. just a huge desire to be famous. What do you say to him and the other 10 uh, Republicans that voted against uh, or voted for removing you from the committee? Well, there were 10 that, that voted for impeachment against President Trump, and they definitely paid the price they heard from Republican voters. There were 11 that voted against me yesterday, um, and that that's something that our leaders should be very upset about. Kevin McCarthy and the rest of the Republican Party is working hard on taking back the majority. And when you have Republicans in the ranks voting against one of their own, opening the door for Democrats to go after every single Republican next, that, that really is a big betrayal. And that could cost us the majority in 22. People are very angry. That's all I've heard from people all morning, furious about that. So I hope that my Republican colleagues really think about what they've done. I'm sure they're going to hear from their voters at home because the base is loyal to President Trump and the base has been very loyal to me and they've shown me that. 
my question is, is there anything that you haven't said that you now want to say I'm sorry for? Not just you regret or walk back, but is there anything you are sorry for saying in the past? Oh, of course. I'm sorry for saying all those things that are wrong and offensive. And, and I sincerely mean that. And I'm, I'm happy to say that. I think it's good to say say when we've done something wrong. So, yeah, that's, that's easy for me. Why did you come to apologize yesterday? Why did you come to apologize yesterday? Congresswoman, are you sorry to David Hogg? What you said to David Hogg and about him? Well, I'm sorry to David Hogg. I'm sorry to David Hogg. What you said to him and about him? David Hogg was an adult when I talked to him. I don't think any of you have realized that. David Hogg uh, was working with the organization uh, that was, go they were going around working hard for strict gun control laws. I'm very opposed to those policies. And so being in the same situation as David Hogg, my voice matters too. And so, no, I'm not sorry for telling him he shouldn't push for gun control. What we need to do is we need to protect our children. I think you're expecting we should protect our, our children and, and your baby as well. Um, with good guys with guns and not allow them to be sitting there sitting ducks. Yeah, yeah thank you. You, 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 you talked earlier about the media teaching people to hate, but wasn't it you who liked a page on Facebook, a comment saying Nancy Pelosi should get a bullet to the head? And didn't, didn't you know, this reminds me of when you guys would ask President Trump, President Trump, do you denounce white supremacy? And he would say, I denounce it. And then you would ask him again, and he would have to say, I denounce it. You comments yesterday, did you? In your I mentioned, I have you said it. You know, here's here's the thing. When you want to keep telling the same story over and over, but you don't want to tell the truth, that's your problem. And that's how we end press conferences. All right, that was Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, a fiery press conference you just saw live here on National Report. And you can see the swarm of reporters uh, following her out the door as she uh, essentially has a mic drop moment uh, with them, them pressing her for more answers on what she said, coming on the heels of being released from her committees, pushed out by Democrats and also 11 Republicans as well.